Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Wanted to spend a few minutes discussing within the RPG Fiduciary Investment Review, or FIR, the different mapping strategies under the second step of the FIR, the consideration step. So the first step, as you likely know, is just to review the plan assets. You can make any changes to the lineup if you hopefully you have PAL set up for most of your plans, and that's very easy. So the preliminary step before you actually go in, view the lineup and make your recommendations is to choose your kind of mapping strategy or destination source. So I'm going to run through each of these options briefly. The first is to pull from the RPAG CIT focus list and map all funds. That means even those that are scoring appropriately. Um, by the way, if you scroll or hover over the question mark, it'll give you some additional details on what you, each of these mean, removing the need for this video. But anyway. Um, so the time you might want to do this is if you're starting kind of revamping the lineup, you're changing providers, let's say you just want to plan, you're going to be making a lot of changes and you're looking for some further guidance as far as what funds uh, you might be using and uh, what RPG's perspectives and quote unquote recommendations are. Feel free to reach out if you're not familiar with what that focus list is, but to give a brief bit of background, RPG goes through an extensive uh, search process within every asset class in the end to narrow the field from, say, 4,000 funds available in the large cap growth category down to a focus list of five funds that in our eyes are the best in terms of performance, score, quality, our qualitative perspective, such as an interview with that manager, et cetera. And then we take an extra step of negotiating the fee with that manager. That is how we arrive at our CIT menu. So it really is not just a competitive advantage and discounted uh, expense for your clients, but it's also, again, our focus list in preferred or top managers. So again, if you choose that map, all fund is going to really revamp the lineup. Honestly, right now, that capability is somewhat hindered. We're working on enhancing that part. So if you're interested in this approach, I would encourage you to reach out to our team. We can manually run this type of report for you. So we call it our TCA or total cost analysis. All we need is a current lineup which is uh, plotted out here on the left-hand side in this example. And then we're basically mapping to those focus list CITs on the right hand here. And the idea is to present to, in particular, again, a prospect or a newer client or one going through a conversion, what the annual total cost savings can be all in if they were to move to an all CIT lineup. So to demonstrate the maximum impact, in this case, it's $20,000 a year. Um, and in this case, they are improving their average fund score by 0 0.4 points. So the fund quality is going up and the fund expenses are going down. Again, reach out to us. If you're interested in that, we help people with those prospect um, kind of presentations or illustrations all the time. The second destination is basically pulling from that focus list and only mapping funds up for elimination. So this is helpful if you don't have your own focus list internally. Again, you want RPG's perspectives. And again, this is only going to take funds that are scoring, that are up for removal, right? So scoring four or below, or have been watchlisted for some amount of time so that now they're up for removal. And that would now show RPAG's true recommendation for that particular asset class. The My Fund menu, you could use this if you do have your own focus list of sorts that you've programmed in the system, which you can do under Menu Tools My Fund menu. And that allows you to basically dial in uh, again, a specific menu or list of funds that you frequently utilize, the system is going to pull from that, um, which obviously you designed. So hopefully you have conviction in those funds. The one that was the default historically um, that I think a lot of people still kind of default to is provider product, meaning this is going to pull from that record keeper that you've selected as the investment source. So in this case, this is a bad example, but we did use or the uh, we selected open architecture. Let's say that was Empower Select. What would already be pre-selected here is Empower Select, right? And now the system is basically gonna pull the highest scoring fund in that asset class under that provider's menu. And, and the tiebreakers information ratio, by the way, which is one of the scorecard metrics. It's important to note that the fund that pops up is not RPG's recommendation. This is really just meant to be, in this case, a placeholder. It's the system that's generating it. There are cases, and this worked out in this case of this current fund being up for removal, that one of the funds on that RPAG CIT focus list, the large growth to CIT with JP Morgan, is one of the funds on our focus list. So it did work out that way. It's important to note, though, I would always double check this, and I recommend you replacing this 90% of the time plus. 
you should really be pulling from your focus list, our focus list, funds that you're aware of, um, you know, I guess familiar with, number one, have high conviction and probably use quite a bit and also know are available. So there's a few reasons why you wouldn't want to take the system's kind of placeholder recommendation. And again, it's not a recommendation. Number one is that fund could be, you know, fear asset management. I've never heard of them. Maybe that's important. You would have name brand or recognition, right? Um, I don't know what the assets are in that strategy. Um, I don't know if there's a minimum for that strategy that has to be hit. Um, I don't know if that fund is open or closed, funds closed to new investors. That fund could be significantly higher cost, like is the case in this case, the fund expense is going to be going up about 30 basis points. Some clients are not going to want that. This fund scores a 10 right now. Looks like it does have a good score history of 10. But if you, um, you know, perhaps this fund three quarters ago only scored a seven and it's had a lights out last couple of quarters, it's catapulted it to the top. Um, so there's not great consistency. There's a bunch of things that I don't want to say could go wrong, but that give you reason to at least do due diligence on that fund. And again, more often than not, pull from funds that you're familiar with, already using, have the highest conviction in. And if you do want extra guidance, again, pull from that RPG CIT focus list. Hopefully that's a helpful review of your options. Feel free to reach out with questions and have a great day.